back to another episode of the It's Just Different Podcast, man, and um, it's been a long time, it's been a long, I'm sorry y'all, man, I, I certainly apologize for what was going on, but I finally, as you see, I have lights in my media room, um, you know, it was a whole thing going on, and the whole house, like my lights were just going out randomly, and uh, took them a while to actually get a maintenance guy here to actually fix them but that's done and over with we have sports we have entertainment we have everything to talk about right now and today I want to talk to you guys about my Minnesota Vikings now um, the Minnesota Vikings yesterday released left tackle Riley Reef, which you know uh, if you're a fan of the Vikings, it's not a surprise, but then again, it is a surprise because you just know that, you know, you just know that they're not prepared for Ezra Cleveland, who they drafted last year, to play left tackle. Um, moved him in as right as uh, the right guard position last season. He, he played pretty well. So nobody knows if he can actually play left tackle in the NFL. So releasing Riley Reef comes as a surprise, but in no fault of his own, when you see two tackles, and granted they're both younger, get tagged this week by their teams, um, he's looking at it and saying, well, there has to be some type of premium on tackles this season. Um, so he's going to test the market. You know, the Vikings try to come to him with some type of not a restructure, but an actual extension. And um, you know, if you if you remember when the season, right before the season started, they was going to make that they made that trade for Yannick and Dakwe, uh, and he was the sacrificial lamb, Riley Reef of who had to take a pay cut, and uh, so they gave him a, a um, they gave him a choice either either take a pay cut or we're going to cut you. And the rumor was he was going around telling teammates goodbye because he thought that this was going to be it. But somehow, some way, he ended up agreeing to it. And so, I'm not even surprised if he told Minnesota, "Hey guys, uh, nah, we ain't doing this this time. Like I don't really care. I know what you try. You guys are trying to do. You're trying to lower my cap hit. Trying to lower my salary, and that's just not going to happen." And he actually played pretty damn well last season. So. Um, I'm 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 really surprised that uh, they didn't try to desperately try to work something out because if you really wanted a guy you would you know you would do anything in your power to keep them in house. So you know the 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 big rumor now is tackle Orlando Brown from the Baltimore Ravens uh, has been in contact has been having dialogue with the Minnesota Vikings about a trade. And if he's playing, if he's having dialogue with the Vikings, that means him, his agent is. That means that some type of extension would have to happen because he's a, actually a right tackle, but he wants you know, Baltimore had given him the uh, the okay to, to to seek a trade because he wants to play left tackle. And uh, so when you think about it, uh, he's a young he's a young guy. Pretty probably an upgrade from uh probably an upgrade from 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 Riley Reef, but we never know. You, you don't know until we see him if he was a good trade in Minnesota. Um, but you know that leads me to, that leads me to think about what compensation would 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 go either way. And I've been I've been listening to a lot of uh, reading a lot of things today and listening to some uh, podcasts or whatever and. It seems to me like the most logical thing would be the Minnesota Vikings pick at 14, the Baltimore Ravens pick at 27. The most logical thing was for them to pick swap. That way, Baltimore skyrockets up to 14, and you get whatever you need. Uh, if one of those wide receivers in this draft uh, somehow fall to you at 14, you could pick one of those guys. Or, I think you can really get a Rashawn Bateman from Minnesota at 14. Rashawn Bateman is an excellent receiver. You can pretty much get him at 14 to bolster your wide receiver room. Or, 
just draft another tackle, that's what you guys really want. You guys didn't want to pay him, so you you draft another tackle, whatever you guys need, because it's not much that team needs. Um, maybe your cornerback, but I don't see any cornerbacks fall into 14. The, the, the two best ones, uh, the guy out of, uh, was it Farley? Out of, uh, I forgot what school he's from, Virginia Tech, Virginia 1 and 2. And then you have uh, Patrick Sertain from Alabama. So I don't think neither one of those guys are going to be anywhere near 14. So um, I would say, you know, maybe you may get lucky. Uh, you love tight ends. You might get lucky and, and Kyle Pitts falls to you. So, um, but again, I don't <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen either. Um, that will be the most logical thing. Switch, switch picks. Minnesota will be the 27th pick. And... Uh, as I uh, as I bring up, uh, sorry guys, as I bring up a mock draft or two, uh, yeah, we're gonna do a mock. We're gonna look at mock drafts here to see what will be available uh, for the Minnesota Vikings if. They were picking at 27. So we're going to go look at Pro Football Focus. We're going to look at that mock draft and um, see what happens here. See, in this mock draft, they have, of course, Lawrence 1, Justin Fields 2. That's shocking. Uh, Jamar Chase 3. Kyle Pitts to the Falcons at 4. Penny Soul at five. Let's go to the pick swaps. Baltimore would have 14 if this were to happen. And at 14, uh, you're looking at, see, Patrick Sertain went at 10. Quiddy Pay went at 11. Farley, Virginia Tech, the guard the corner went to 12. Rashawn Slater, the tackle, went to the Chargers on this one. So when I look through the guys who have been picked, uh, You would have at 14, you would have the option to draft Christian Barmore, the defensive lineman from Alabama. Uh, Rashad Bateman is still there. Uh, Gregory Russo, Miami. Uh, Christian Derisaw, Virginia Tech tackle, is really good. Uh, Michael Parsons, a linebacker from Penn State, who falls. Now, this one falls all the way to hell to 19. What the hell? And then Jalen Waddle is still on the board. See, that's what you need. You need a, you need a guy. You need a receiver. Jalen Waddle in this draft falls all the way to 20. So, I don't see if Walt, I if they were to pick swap, there's no way Jalen Waddle falls. Jalen Waddle or Rashad Bateman, I don't believe, goes anywhere past 14. Um, I... Jalen Waddle was just fast, man. That it's hard. Like you have you have Hollywood Brown. That's hard. That's a tough one. But I'm glad I'm not a Baltimore fan. But let's go to let's go to 27 and the Minnesota Vikings pick if they were to make a pick swap here. Let's go to 27 to see who's all the way down here. And you got guys like wide receiver. See, see they have PFF has Baltimore taking a receiver, Terrence Marshall, LSU. Uh, you have guys like J.C. Horn, cornerback. You have Terrence Marshall. You have safety from TCU. Uh, we need a safety to start on the opposite side of Harrison Smith, but I don't see one getting drafted in the first round. Uh, you have Kadarius Toney from Florida. Uh, Rondell Moore will be up here. Uh, Asante Samuel, Jr. Uh, Jalen Phillips, the other uh, edge from Miami. You'll have your pick of those guys if you're the Vikings, but I don't see Eliza Vera Tucker in this one fall. The guard falls all the way down here. To, see, that's another one of my points I want to get to. Sorry. Uh, this draft stuff is a little addicting. Um, if I'm Minnesota and we go all the way to 27, there, this is not a great class for defensive tackles, so you're going to have to find a tackle for decent 
price and free agency. And there's a lot of guys being let go from cap casualties because of the, the cap being at 182 and a half from 198 because of the coronavirus and a lot of uh, money that a lot of teams did not make because of no fans being in the stands and no sales and things like that. Um, so for me, if I'm Minnesota, we need, I wouldn't mind, I you know, Mike Hughes is, is injury prone, so I don't mind them taking a cornerback right here. This is probably a, this is a hot spot for corners at the end of this first round. Um, you would have your tackle situation, but it also depends on what you do with free agency. Now, the big one here is Anthony Barr. What are you going to do with Anthony Barr? Um, me personally, I would try like hell to trade him because I don't believe he he gets paid he, he's getting paid way too much for what he does um, he's not anybody who jumps off the screen when you watch him play um, they you know they let him go in free agency he had to deal with the Jets and somehow some way they just decide to overpay him to keep him he's Mike Zimmer's first draft pick so you know Zimmer loves his guys um, You know, he's going to be the domino that affects everything when it comes to their uh, cap number when free agency begins next week because he, he has, a, has a, a high cap. I think he has the third highest cap hit on the team. And um, you still have to pay Daniel Hunter. God only knows what's going to happen with that. I do not. I am not on board with trading Daniel Hunter for anything. You no, you do not find guys like Daniel Hunter. You just do not find guys like that. I I don't give a damn about a neck injury. You give that man his money, and what you can do, you can do what Dallas Cowboys just did with 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 uh, Dak Prescott. You void, you give him a long long term deal. You push some money down the road, and you void it. You void a couple years at the end of it. And that way the cap hit is not so much in one season right now. Um, I think they should do that by any means necessary with him. You can extend Brian O'Neill. He's a really great right tackle. You can make some moves. You can extend Harrison Smith. You can get some cap. You need about $20, 22000000 million in cap space, I believe. They can, I believe they can get there. It's going to take some hard ball, but I believe they can get there. You make the pick swap with Baltimore. You get you give them the 14. You switch with 14. You get 27. You give them a third round pick. Uh, one of your third round picks in this draft, and probably a fifth rounder or something like that, just to throw it in the deal. Um, and you, so you have your left tackle of the future if this was to happen, and then. I would do is I you get to twenty to twenty two million dollars with cap space, and I will go. I'm throwing every damn thing I have at Joe Thune, the left guard who did not get franchise tag from the New England Patriots. I give him everything because what the hell did we see last season on the left side all year long? Dakota Dozier might have been the worst left guard in the history of football. Like, he just does not, he just does not play good. And, and what even, and what bothers me even more is the fact that the Minnesota Vikings literally let him play the entire season at left guard. Before Pat Elfline, the Pat Elfline was bad at left guard last year. This year, he goes right guard, he was bad. So you have Dozier at left guard back, Elfline at right guard back. He gets hurt. You slide in Drew Samir. The Drew Samir experiment comes in. We all we all talk. We all heard about how good they think he's going to be, and he was the worst right guard in football. And then Dakota Dozier was the worst left guard in football. How in the hell does one football team have the two worst guards at their position in the entire NFL? You cannot tell me you're that bad. At identifying offensive linemen. Then you sit here and you go, well, Kirk Cousins is, is bad at pressure. Kirk Cousins, Kirk. 
Kirk Cousins, after the first, what is it, the, the, the first six weeks of the season, had an excellent season after that. Played excellent. The one and five start after that, he was he was superbly, he was one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL. And even with that, even with the left guard being so bad, you move Ezra Cleveland in finally after after watching Drusamia fail so badly, he literally lost the game for us against the Seattle Seahawks. And I don't want to talk about that. But you finally put Ezra Cleveland in. He did a decent job for a position he's never played before. Never played right guard before. Goes in as a rookie. Plays pretty decently. Still needs to get powerful, learn some learn some uh, technique. But he did pretty good. Dakota Dozier was still the problem. Brad uh, Bradbury at center, he's a problem too. But I believe he gets better if you have the inside pretty decent. Like, if you get Thune, you have Ezra Cleveland on the other side. I don't believe uh, Garrett Bradbury plays any any worse than what he did his first two seasons. So, you go into the season with Orlando Brown left tackle, left guard Joe Thune, Garrett Bradbury at center, Ezra Cleveland at right guard, uh, Brian O'Neill at right tackle. That is a damn good offensive line for an offense that is elite if Kirk Cousins gets time, you have Irv Smith at tight end now. You have Dalvin Cook. You have Thielen. You have J Justin Jefferson. We still need a third freaking receiver. But I already know in this draft, they're going to go defense. They're going to go defensive. But, but, I do hope guys that they have on their board are not there. If they do a pick swap and they get to 27 and the guys aren't, I just hope beyond hope that those guys are gone. That way they get forced into drafting some type of receiver. Some guy like a Rondell Moore or uh, who, was, who the hell I say was here? Terrence Marshall will be. I, I, would, I wouldn't mind Terrence Marshall. I wouldn't mind Rondell Moore. I just, uh, we need another third receiver. The, the Chad BB experiment, uh, that needs to stop. That needs to stop. Uh, BC Johnson, he's okay. He's not, he's not, he's, he doesn't do anything great but we need somebody that can uh cause problems schematically and uh you know so don't 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 rule out drafting the receiver here in the first round at all um there's some pretty damn good ones here too so but i expect them fully to go defense if uh because it, like i said you get to 2022 you give let's say you give uh joe thuney uh, fifteen million dollars. You can then go bargain shopping for you know another defensive end, or another defensive tackle, a three technique. You got Michael Pierce coming back. Um, you know it's a lot of different options the Vikings have right here, man. But you know, thanks for listening today. This has been the, this has been the most updated podcast I've had in a long time. So thank you guys, man, for still sticking in with me. I love y'all. Until next time, peace.